Have mercy, Sid, ye longest of beards. Anonymous. Poema de Mio Sid. Now we have the washing of Don Quixote's beard. Perhaps poetic justice for his irreverence toward the cleric. Now it's Don Quixote's turn to be humiliated. Don Quixote submits because he thinks it is an Aragonese custom, believing that it must be a custom of the country. The Duke's servants put so much lather on Don Quixote's face and beard that when they pretend to run out of water, the knight must remain motionless with his eyes closed and his neck extended. There is also a touch of race or class difference here, for his complexion appears more than moderately brown. Note also that Don Quixote's humiliation results from the independent initiative of the servants. The Duke and Duchess vacillate between anger and laughter and do not know whether to punish or reward their servants. They did not know how to proceed, whether to castigate the damsels for their daring or to reward them for the pleasure they received from seeing Don Quixote in that situation. This relates back to Don Quixote's ongoing post-feudal conflict with Sancho. Sancho is particularly shocked by the humiliation of his master, although ironically, he also recognizes that his own beard is filthy and that he could use a washing himself. The Duchess orders the butler to take Sancho away to wash his beard. She then appears to change the topic by asking Don Quixote to describe the beauty and features of Lady Dulcinea. Did you know the Spanish word moro? more, as well as the word mora, blackberry, and moreno, dark-haired or dark-skinned, derived from the Greek word mauros, which means dark, alluding to the skin color of the inhabitants of the ancient kingdom of Mauritania in North Africa. In a hilarious echo of Durandarte's fate in the cave of Montesinos, as well as a hyperbolic version of the Neoplatonic theory of love found in Garcilaso de la Vega's fifth sonnet, Don Quixote says that he wishes he could remove his heart and place it on the table so that your excellency might see her portrayed there in detail. He then extends this absurdity by observing that the great artists and rhetoricians of Greek and Latin antiquity, such as Apelles and Cicero, should also occupy themselves with Dulcinea's portrait. After reaching these heights regarding Dulcinea's perfection, Don Quixote then descends back to reality when he reports his recent disillusionment at El Toboso. Notice again how Cervantes' humor relies on a tactic of excess. He accumulates a mildly comical point until it becomes unbearable and awkwardly funny again. I found her enchanted and converted from princess into peasant, from beautiful to ugly, from angel into devil, from sweet to pestilent, from eloquent to rustic, from graceful to uneasy, from light into darkness, and finally, from Dulcinea of Toboso into a lowly farm girl from Sayago. Quixotic Mission According to Don Quixote, how was Dulcinea transformed outside of El Toboso? A. From a lawyer into a housewife. B. From an exotic dancer into an actress. C. From light to darkness. Correct answer, C. From light to darkness. When the Duke asks who has transformed Dulcinea, Don Quixote makes his usual recourse to wizards. But notice how the wizards are now a race. Who else could it be but some evil enchanter from among the many who envy and pursue me? That accursed race, born into the world to tarnish and destroy the deeds of the good, and to elevate and brighten the workings of the wicked. Which race might this be? Finally, Don Quixote portrays himself once again as the modern romantic hero. To take from an errant knight, his beloved, is to remove the eyes with which he sees and the sun by which he is enlightened and the sustenance by which he lives. A knight errant, without a beloved, is like a tree without leaves, a building without a foundation, and a shadow without a body to cast it. Another amazing aspect of Cervantes' prose is that he combines pathos and bathos, i.e. heartbreaking tenderness and laughable satire, like few authors before or since. Once again, Cervantes is counterculture. Whoa, 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 wait. This is my space. Once again, Cervantes is countercultural with respect to his time by advancing feminist ideas. 
If you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, click here. To enroll in our course, click here. Also, please follow us on our social media.